Howdy, it's Kyle. I'm here in Chicago. I've walked about 50 miles over the past four days just exploring different parts of the city, seeing different neighborhoods. And this really is one of the best cities in the country for walking. Even though it's a big city, you can see a lot by foot. And it really is a city of neighborhoods. So in this video, I want you to discuss some of the great neighborhoods that make up this city. It's almost like a large cluster of small towns that come together to form one big city. And that's one of the reasons why I like it so much. So if you're interested in learning more about the Windy City, this is the video for you. First, some general information. At the census, the population was about 2.7 million people. It's the third largest city in the U.S., and that represents some slight population growth since 2010. The metro population is over 9 million people, and that includes the northwestern corner of Indiana. It's the third largest metro in the U.S. behind only New York and Los Angeles, and the fourth largest combined metro in the U.S. also behind the D.C. Baltimore area. The state of Illinois gets a lot of bad press, and Chicago gets a lot of bad press too. And with Illinois being one of only two states that lost population between the 2010 and 2020 censuses, a lot of folks believe that Chicago is the reason for the population decline. This map breaks Illinois down by counties. The counties highlighted in green gained population between the last two censuses, and the counties highlighted in purple are the ones that lost population. So as you can see here, all of the counties of Metro Chicago, which is often referred to as Chicagoland, have gained population and most of the rural counties in the state are the ones losing population. I don't normally break down cities by race and ethnicity, but for Chicago it's very interesting. It's approximately 30% each, white, Hispanic, and black. And there's also a sizable Asian population at 7%. A good majority of the Hispanic population in Chicago is of Mexican origin. Many people from Mexico moved to Chicago in the early 20th century to do largely unskilled type labor. And in the years since, the Mexican population has been a big part of the identity of the city. Much of the black population moved from the south in the early 20th century as part of what is called the Great Migration. A lot of black people in the south moved to the northern cities to get away from Jim Crow and to get factory jobs. However, many of these employers in these factories up north wouldn't hire them. So as a result, you had a large number of poor black folks clustered in specific neighborhoods. And because the cycle of poverty is so difficult to escape, there are still several neighborhoods in the city that are predominantly black and predominantly very poor. The city is divided up into 77 community areas, each of which has a distinct feel. And that's one of the things that I like the most about Chicago is the fact that you have all these little community areas in one big city. The heart of the city, the central business district, is often referred to as the Loop. It sits along the lakeshore and is essentially halfway between the northern and southern ends of the city. Running right through the heart of the city is the Chicago River, and the area along here is where you see some really fantastic views, wonderful skyscrapers on both sides of the river. And you've probably seen photos of when they dump a bunch of green dye in the river for a St. Patrick's Day, but the river is already kind of green anyway. At the south end of downtown along the lake shore is where you have the museum campus. And as you might expect, there's a lot of museums there. Natural history, the planetarium, aquarium. And this is also where you have the large convention center and Soldier Field, which is where the Chicago Bears play. Toward the north end of downtown along the lake shore is the Navy Pier. This is where the Children's Museum is and some amusement park rides. And it is very touristy, but there's also some outdoor green space for concerts and other outdoor events that locals will go to. And all of these things that I just mentioned downtown are within walking distance of each other. And I spent the entirety of my first day there just walking around downtown. There's a nice walking and biking path along the lake connecting the museum campus and the Navy Pier. But even more interesting is just walking the various streets of downtown. One of the most iconic things about walking around downtown Chicago are the L trains. So as a visitor, it's just kind of cool to see these trains clanking along these elevator rail lines at a speed just a little more than you can walk. So the Loop is definitely the heart and soul of Chicago, but there are many other great neighborhoods in the city as well. Parts of town north of downtown are referred to as the north side, and parts of town south of downtown are the south side. For the most part, the north side is middle class or wealthy, but there are some pockets of poverty even in the north side. And the north side is where you have more of the cool, trendy, fun type neighborhoods, more of the gentrification of older neighborhoods. 
North of downtown along the lakeshore is Wrigleyville, which is the part of town where you have Wrigley Field where the Chicago Cubs play. And this is just a really fun part of town, a lot of sports themed bars and restaurants. You'll see people at these bars pre-gaming it before they go to the stadium. For folks that are not going to the stadium itself to watch the game, there'll be a lot of people in the restaurants and bars in this part of town watching the game there. And although I wasn't there after a game, I'm pretty sure there'll be people in the bars drinking after the game as well. But some of my favorite neighborhoods in the city are on the north side, but not along the lakeshore. One of them is called Andersonville, and historically this was a part of town where many Swedish immigrants moved to. You have the Swedish American Museum located in this neighborhood, and there's been some gentrification here as well. A lot of cool local restaurants and bars. Some good boutique shops, a good record store. And it's not really a touristy part of town, it's very locals oriented. Also in this general part of the city is a part of town called Avondale. And this is where you had a large Polish immigrant community. And you can still see lots of Polish heritage on display, including the world famous Kurowski Sausage Shop. You ask people who the Sausage King of Chicago is, and most will say Abe Froman, but it's actually Kurowski. Also in this part of the city is the Logan Square neighborhood. This is another kind of cool and hip, recently gentrified type neighborhood. Up until about 20 years ago or so, there was a large Mexican population living in this part of town. But with a lot of gentrification, a lot of the Mexican population moved to other parts of the city, many into the northwestern corner of the city, which is near O'Hare Airport. And so as you can imagine, the northwestern corner of the city, near the fourth busiest airport in the world, is not going to have the highest real estate values. But even though the north side is generally wealthier than the south side, arguably the poorest part of town and the highest crime part of town is in the north side. It's the area around the neighborhoods West Garfield Park and Austin. And I'm not going to be like the media and sensationalize or overemphasize the parts of town that really do have high crime and much gang activity and problems with drugs. But nonetheless, there are several neighborhoods that face some of these really high crime problems. For the most part, the south side is poor and has higher crime than the north side, but that doesn't mean that the entire south side is this high crime poor area. With that being said, the kind of the south centralist part of the city is where you have the largest concentration of some of these big high crime neighborhoods. And the two neighborhoods in this part of town having the highest crime rates and the highest amount of gang activity are called Greater Grand Crossing and Inglewood. But when you get to the southeast part of the city, mainly along the lakeshore, it's mostly middle class, some rich folks there as well, and overall it's such a nice part of town. And the southwestern corner of the city is just kind of working class, middle class folks as well. The southeast part of the city is where you have a lot of predominantly black middle class neighborhoods. Although the richest folks in Chicago, regardless of race, are probably going to be living in the northeastern corner of the city, some of those giant mansions near the lakeshore. Editorializing about some of the high crime areas and the number of shootings is well beyond the scope of this channel, but from a geography standpoint, I can tell you that it is not most of the city that is like that. And as a geographer, it's just so frustrating to see the media be so successful in their depiction of the city. It's literally successful propaganda as millions of Americans genuinely believe that the majority of Chicago is like some of these high crime, poverty stricken neighborhoods. Just southwest of downtown is Chinatown, and just like many other big cities in the country, a large Chinese immigrant population moved to the part of town that eventually became known as Chinatown. Just south of that is an area called Bridgeport, and as the number of Chinese immigrants grew in the city, many moved farther south into this neighborhood. And now this neighborhood is being gentrified into more of a cool hipster type neighborhood. And I remember walking around this neighborhood and looking up at this building and thinking, wow, when you see this font, there's some gentrification going on. The old world immigrants were not using this font. And while walking around this part of town, I got a chance to meet up with a special guest and we talked about Chicago. Okay, I'm here with Chicago Geographer. I was up there a couple of weeks ago. We got a chance to meet up at a spot called Henry Palmasano Park, just south of downtown, just barely into the south side. Really cool spot. What can you tell me about it? Yeah, so this park, it used to be an old limestone quarry, and they recently converted it into a park in, I think, 2009. Uh, the old quarry walls are now used for a fishing pond. It's really interesting, and they've got lots of hiking trails and an old landfill site that you can hike to the top of and get great views of the city as well. So it's a really interesting spot and sort of overlooked as well in the area. Yeah, this, that kind of part of town in general, I thought was maybe a little 
off the beaten path a little bit. It's, it's called Bridgeport, and it's an area just south of the old Chinatown. And it seems like in more recent years, the the previous Lithuanian immigrants kind of dispersed throughout the city, and that became almost an extension of the current Chinatown. And then when we were there, we saw some signs of gentrification, looking at some of these uh, Asian restaurants next door to a you know a newer kind of place. So. What do you think is going on in Bridgeport right now? And is this becoming like an emerging kind of cool neighborhood in the city? Yeah, I think Bridgeport and that whole area is definitely gentrifying fast. I think, you know, a lot of the fringe areas around downtown like that have been gentrifying a lot. I think that's definitely a big trend that's happening there right now. Yeah, so you're you're from the north side, right? And you currently live on the south side. What are some mm -hmm. of the, the differences you can tell me between some of those? Because you hear about you know, some of the rivalries almost, some of the stark differences. What are some of the things you've noticed from living in each part of the city? Yeah, there's, there's definitely a big rivalry, north side versus south side. You know, you got the Cubs fans and the Sox fans, uh, but also just differences in sort of infrastructure and just cultural differences as well. Uh, the north side, you know, has been gentrifying and just really on the upswing for a while now. But the south side has, you know, faced a lot of disinvestment issues and things like that. So it's really a, t a tale of two cities in a way. And also there were many Eastern European enclaves. So again, Bridgeport area had some Lithuanian immigrants, but there are many other parts of town that had other uh, Eastern European enclaves. And I remember watching one of your GeoGuessr streams and you were going right by a, it was a cemetery somewhere. I don't know exactly where it was, but you knew exactly the, the ethnic group that this cemetery was for. So what are some of the interesting, you know, Eastern European type enclaves you can find throughout the city? Yeah, for sure. Uh, so that cemetery you were talking about is the Bohemian National Cemetery. So there, are, uh, it has Bohemian, a lot of that's right. Yeah, it has a lot of affiliation with the sort of Czech immigration and all of that. Um, so yeah, the Czech group was pretty big here. They were settled around the Pilsen area for the most part, and that's how it got the name. Uh, there was also the Ukrainian village area as well, with a lot of Ukrainian immigrants. Um, we have a lot of uh, a big Polish population here as well. Uh, a lot on the northwest side now. Yeah, and I was just walking around that part of town in general. Um, I was near Logan Square and that kind of general area, kept walking more and more, stumbled into Ukrainian villas, didn't even know it was there. Saw a lot of Ukrainian flags there, some solidarity, solidarity with what's going on right now. Is there still a large Ukrainian population there? I heard some older folks speaking what I presume was Ukrainian, but I wasn't quite sure how many Ukrainians are still in that type of neighborhood, in that neighborhood specifically. Yeah, I, I think there are definitely some people still left, uh, but it, it has changed a lot, especially with that area gentrifying too. But yeah, I, th I think it still does hold on to its, uh, its cultural roots there. Yeah, I mean, so I'm making this video right now, and I think the overall theme of this video is just how much I like Chicago compared to almost all other major cities. So have you got a chance to travel to many other cities and compare it to, or how do you feel about Chicago just personally, you being from there? Yeah, so I, I might be a bit biased, but I, I absolutely love Chicago. Uh, I have had the chance to go to a lot of other big cities in the U.S. I've been to New York and Seattle, places like that. And they, they're fairly similar in a sense, but Chicago is just really unique in that it has such a big size, but it's also fairly affordable. Fantastic food. You got the lakefront right there. So it's really unique in that way, especially among the larger cities. Yeah, I mean, I love my time there. I just love spending the whole days just walking around but i wanted to thank you for joining me here uh guy this is chicago geographer he has a wonderful channel he does geo guesser he's really good at that he also has some other great geography content so real nerdy guy he goes to the university of chicago so you know the guy is a complete nerd so uh, <laughs> i'll leave the links to his uh channel in the description but do check him out again thank you very much chicago geographer yeah thank you so much for having me now i want to talk a little bit about the economy of chicago the GDP of Cook County alone is $345 billion, which is more than 28 states, several of which have more people. And despite many people leaving the state of Illinois, companies like to move to Chicago. In fact, for the decade of the 2010s, Chicago was the number one city in the country for corporate relocation. And there are many major companies headquartered there, including Boeing Aircraft, McDonald's, Walgreens, Kraft Heinz, and many others. And I think a big reason for companies wanting to be located in Chicago is the relatively low cost of operation there. And part of the reason for housing costs being relatively low there is because the property taxes are so high, people aren't willing to pay as much for the house itself when the taxes are going to be so high. 
some of these less expensive neighborhoods might be a fine neighborhood, but you might not be able to walk around very far before you get to neighborhoods where you might not want to be walking around. But once you get up into the 300,000 range, which crazy enough is pretty cheap these days, you can get some really nice housing in really good parts of town. You're not getting houses like this in New York, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Seattle, Denver, DC, or Boston for these prices. So that's just one more reason to like Chicago. Now I want to talk about some of the iconic foods of Chicago. The most iconic is deep dish pizza. And I really like deep dish pizza, although I think it's unfairly compared to New York style pizza. You really need to be in the mood more for like an Italian meal or a lasagna if you want a deep dish pizza. The city is also known for Italian beef sandwiches. And this is a pot roast beef cooked with beef stock instead of au jus. And with the city being known for having a lot of sausage, it's also well known for having Chicago style hot dogs. However, to me, these things look awful and I'll take your word on it if you like them. I love pickles, but on a hot dog? What's wrong with you people? So overall, I really like Chicago and I'm not afraid to call it my favorite big city in the country. All kinds of cultural attractions and urban amenities, lots of green space, a few really big parks and a whole bunch of smaller ones, beaches along the lake shore, one of the best food scenes in the entire country, one of the best music scenes in the entire country, and a relatively low cost of living, especially compared to other big cities in the country. In walking around town, I talked to a bunch of people, asked them what they thought about Chicago, and the answers were basically unanimous. I love Chicago, except I hate the winters, and F the news media. And so as a visitor who's been there several times, I have to echo that sentiment. I love Chicago, except I hate those winters, and F the news media. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve and consider subscribing to this channel if you're interested in learning more about geography. I'm talking about cities like this, also going over states, ranking things in all kinds of different categories, talking about cross-country road tripping. I'm a bit of a nerd, so everything comes from a little more nerdy type perspective. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King, signing out.